Dear friends, it is truly an honor, a privilege as always, and especially when I'm with you, the Rail Baltica family. Thank you for inviting me to speak again uh, for the second time, 100% uh, I think so far, uh, the Rail Baltica Global Forum. I am a big Rail Baltica believer and convicted, convinced that it makes Europe better for everyone. Our future needs to be faster, safer, greener, and more connected. And Rail Baltica embodies all these qualities. Transport is a European Union's job and responsibility. Rail Baltica is an essential project for the whole Europe. A significant part of the funding is coming from the EU budget, as you know, and this all is very closely tied to the to MFF, the multi-annual financial framework, as we uh, just uh, heard. And that means that we are actually uh, living really, really interesting and crucial times because all this is being um, negotiated as we as we speak. Uh, we Europeans simply have to do more together, particularly on issues where cooperation brings better results and demonstrated added value for everyone. We have to advance economic development and cohesion across borders and in all regions. That benefits all Europeans, but not at any price. There has to be conditionality and European values must be respected. Europe needs a strong budget and a strong MFF. Now before diving into the um, uh, details of the future MFF, uh, next decades EU's uh, transport policy and funding of Rail Baltica, I would first like to briefly look back and see how we got here. Rail Baltica was first dreamt about um, in the early 90s when Soviet Union was collapsing. Numerous visions were presented in several different and separate occasions throughout the decade. The historical context is very clear. The Baltic states were connected by rail, mainly to St. Petersburg and Moscow. Now it was time to change that and reconnect to Europe, both for economic and symbolic reasons. This historical background, strategic nature of it, and security implications for the whole region should not be forgotten now that Rail Baltica is close to become reality. Cooperation between the Baltic states and with the European Union started already before uh, these great countries, the Baltic states, became officially EU member states. Since then, Rail Baltica has been getting step by step closer uh, to the actual building phase that everyone has been waiting for. After years and several rounds and different levels of analysis, studies and agreements regarding the project, the first design contract for the Rail Baltica mainline was signed earlier this year, as we know, and the construction work that we are all uh, uh, waiting to really see happen should begin, should begin early next year. Um, it was clear from the start that Rail Baltica would not be built uh, if it was to be funded by the annual uh, national budgets of, of, uh, of Estonia, Latvia, and Lithuania only. The cross-border project is simply so huge, complex, and requires the kind of long-term commitment that usually is not present in domestic politics, no matter what is promised in speeches and on podiums. This is exactly where European involvement, multi-annual budgeting, and EU funding programs make a difference and bring that true added value. This is also why I would next like to say a few words on transport policy, EU budget, and the MFF before continuing on the importance of getting Rail Baltica project done. The MFF sets priorities and limits to annual EU spending for a seven-year period. This kind of medium or long-term financial planning is central uh, for the large-scale projects uh, such as infrastructure, and it is especially true for cross-border projects. 
Not to mention that it just makes plain sense to pool resources and cooperate as much as possible on transport policy, to plan and build cross-border infrastructure together, and that is the key word. After all, without sufficient transportation infrastructure, the four great freedoms that the EU and, and the peace on our continent are built upon, the free movement of, of uh, people, goods, capital, and services, would not really mean much. And I think, I think that the authors, authors and signatories of the treaties defining transport policy of the European Union as a shared competence, I think that they knew that and they really understood that. Under the current MFF, transport policy and infrastructure projects are financed via several instruments, from research to cohesion policy programs through both grants and financial instruments, depending on what type of project or part of a project is at hand and what is the context. EU structural funds are an important source of financing for transport also because of the national envelopes that are more difficult to cut in annual budgetary procedure than many other programs managed by the European Commission. On the other hand, co-financing and national budgets play a central role in making the transport, um, uh, making the, uh, the transport project successful as they incentivize member states to take ownership of the project and responsibility of the results instead of just focusing on counting the euros coming from Brussels. Since 2013, the modern trans-European transport network, TEN-T as we know it, has been aiming at completing a European-wide, purposeful and modern network of roads, railways, inland waterways, maritime shipping routes, ports, airports, etc. It is basically a map of Europe on which the most important connections are drawn on. And TEN-T is the link that ties MFF and Rail Baltica together. The centrally managed Connecting Europe facility, CEF, was set up around the same time with TEN-T to fund the completion of this map and especially the nine so-called TEN-T core network corridors. These nine corridors are the most vital strategic veins that were chosen to keep Europe moving forward and keep moving together. A significant part of CEF transport financing is directed towards completing these 10T core uh, network corridors. Rail Baltica is recognized and is an essential part of the North Sea Baltic corridor, so completing it contributes exactly to this goal, to finishing the map. So it is self-evident that EU financing for Rail Baltica comes from CEF. The decision to have a powerful and visionary 10T policy and strong funding priorities under CEF has proven to be a very fruitful approach. One of the most revolutionary aspects of 10T, and especially the so-called corridors, is that they are given priority when money is scarce, like it is. It is also one of the reasons why the midterm evaluation showed CEF to be so successful to have such a significant EU added value and proven benefits. Being a CEF project is basically a stamp of excellence. Since the actual building work starts at the end of EU's budgetary cycle, it is essential to give Rail Baltica particular attention and financial support in the next MFF. The good thing is that we have that strong evidence of the huge added value. Um, there are not many smarter things, really, that you can do with uh, the EU money. This view is correctly shared by the Commission, who suggested to continue both 10 and CEF also under the next MFF. The goal is to complete the 10 core network by 2030. It is calculated to cost altogether around 500 billion euros, most of, most of which should come from private sector and national budgets. In the 10 and CEF proposals and negotiation papers, Rail Baltica continues to be recognized as an important part of the North Sea Baltic Corridor, and money is earmarked 
for its construction. This is a good starting point when it comes to guaranteeing funding for Rail Baltica during the post-2020 MFF period. It is widely understood and recognized that the regions along Rail Baltica should be better connected to the rest of Europe for everyone's sake. From a Finnish point of view, the new CEF proposal is clearly an improvement when comparing to the current regulation. Northern Europe wasn't previously included in the 10T core corridors, uh, but the post-2020 proposal extends the Scandinavia-Mediterranean corridor from Stockholm via Umeå and Luleå to all the way to Oulu and Narvik. Similarly, the North Sea Baltic corridor is continued from Helsinki to Luleå. I believe this benefits greatly the whole Baltic Sea region. The extensions, however, would not have been possible without Rail Baltica and the progress and commitments already made there. But the new northern additions benefit also Rail Baltica as it is not anymore the last leg of the North Sea Baltic corridor, but a necessary middle part connecting northern and central Europe. Currently, and I think this is the part of the speech that you all are ex uh, really actually waiting for, the, the European Parliament <clears throat> and the member states are trying to find a compromise on the post 2020 CEF. The Parliament is a big believer in the usefulness of CEF and would like to increase the CEF transport funding from 11 billion euros, as was mentioned, uh, proposed by the Commission, to almost 18 billion euros. In addition, the Parliament has stated that there should be a 10 billion euro transfer, transfer from the cohesion fund to CEF. <clears throat> now, this is the part that we are really fighting over. <clears throat> the Commission suggested and proposed that we should have an 11.3 transfer, um, but here uh, I have to say that some members of the Parliament do get a little short-sighted and would rather guarantee as much immediate money as possible for their home countries, their home regions, and their constituencies. This explains, and this is really what explains, the mixed signals that the Parliament's report on common provisions regulation sends, with its already approved by the plenary 4 billion euro transfer from the Cohesion Fund to CEF. Although I have no doubt uh, the same dynamic can uh, occasionally, <clears throat> or maybe even more often, be seen in the Council. At the moment, it looks like we get to vote on the partial CEF agreement achieved uh, last week between the two co-legislators uh, before the upcoming elections. But without any exact amounts, as the member states do not want to discuss numbers, without first having an idea, an idea of the whole MFF. And after that, depending on how difficult it is to finish the CEF negotiations, the final CEF compromise might be achieved only during the latter half of 2020 under Germany's EU Council presidency. The total estimated costs of Rail Baltica are approximately 5.8 billion euros, and currently the understanding is that the EU will finance 85% of it, depending, of course, on what kind of an agreement will be found on the next MFF. The rest of the money comes from Estonia, about 270 million euros, Latvia, 390, and Lithuania, around 490 million euros, if my numbers are correct. That is from the member states uh, that implement the project and also benefit from it the most at the beginning. If we take into account also Poland and the leg between Warsaw and the Polish-Lithuanian border, already 1.9 billion euros from CEF have been invested into Rail Baltica. But additional 5.6 billion euros are needed if we want the project to be finished in time. And this, of course, is what I believe everyone in this room wants to see happen. But however, the rail, uh, from Rail Baltica's perspective, it is important to highlight 
that before the MFF negotiations between the member states are concluded, there is certainly, uh, there is no certainty, no certainty whatsoever that the potential beneficiaries will get any funding for their projects, nor that any of our common policy goals will be achieved. No matter how much I would have liked to create maximum certainty for the beneficiaries and have the post-2020 MFF agreement finished already this spring, I have to admit that the context for the negotiations was not and is not and will not be easy. We have many serious challenges ahead of us. Migration, security, possibly a hard Brexit, and the consequent budget gap. And with Brexit also comes the, need, the new need to ensure that Ireland is well connected to the continental Europe, which puts additional demands on the EU's transport budget. We most likely will not know any figures, levels, transfers, or co-financing rates for sure, for CEF or for any other EU funding program until there is an overall MFF agreement. And this will, uh, according to the official goal stated by the Commission, take place closer to the end of the year during the Finnish presidency. But I would like, unfortunately, uh, advise you not getting overly optimistic about this either. I mean, the timeline. Uh, to put it short, the, the simple reason is that, and ironically, because the European Parliament was the first, um, was the first one to actually have a, a very well prepared and, uh, and uh, in time prepared position on MFF, and that was already uh, a year ago. Um, but, um, but the fact of the matter is that, that in democracy we have to have elections every now and then, and every now and then is five years in the European case. And just unfortunately uh, happens so that, uh, that the, um, the budgetary cycle falls into a, a rather challenging place in the calendar. And this again in turn means that no matter how hard we with our prepared position would like to see and already wanted to see this take place before the elections, the member states and the council was not ready for that. And now the council and the commissioner especially is waiting for us to do something that is probably impossible. And that is that we have the parliament elections at the end of May and then the new uh, parliament uh, or the political groups will start to reconvene uh, in June uh, and 1st of March, uh, I mean 1st of July, we will reconvene with the new parliament, uh, but that will be a technical, uh, you know, that will be, uh, the committees will be set up, uh, uh, the, 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 the leaderships of the political parties and the, the presidents of the, com the committees will, will take their place, and then there will come August, and then there will be September, and September, October, we have to have a set of new uh, agreements, and it will be a new parliament. And absolutely nobody at this moment knows what the new parliament will look like. If we are lucky, if we all vote, you know, I, whatever I say here doesn't matter, but if we vote the responsible way, let me put it diplomatically, then we will maybe have a very, very slight chance of getting everything through. Um, before uh, October um, uh, Council, uh, but uh, that's, uh, that's really a very slim chance. I want to be very honest with you. I know that the Commission would love to see this happen by the end of the year, and we are doing the best we can, <clears throat> but uh, we don't even have uh, the members in place for the Budgets Committee uh, that will start in the, the 1st of July. So let's have the elections first, and then we can come back to this topic, uh, maybe another conference sometime in September, and then we'll know more. But personally, I am for Rail Baltica. And luckily, because that doesn't matter so much, 
the whole European Parliament also supports Rail Baltica. The CEF analysis and track record also support Rail Baltica. So our next task is to make the post-2020 MFF work for completing this railway. And one of the most important things is to convince and remind the member states about the added value and high returns of well-planned and strategic cross-border transport infrastructure. That it is sensible to pool and spend money together on EU level. Now is not the time to cut transport funding. This is my message to the member states as well. This is why in the next MFF there just simply has to be enough money for big cross-border transport infrastructure projects and completing the 10T core network corridors. The estimated benefits of a completed Rail Baltic are expected to be more than 18 billion euros. Moreover, the paybacks <clears throat> would not be limited to the Baltic states only. Reduced travel time, better connections and cutting carbon dioxide the CO2 emissions will benefit the general public, businesses and travelers all over Europe. To put it short, once again, Rail Baltica creates welfare. I believe this is also one of the reasons why Finland wants to be a shareholder in RB Rail. And let's not forget the symbolism and value of bringing Europeans concretely closer to each other. With Rail Baltica, uh, the Baltic states, and also Finland, are reconnecting to Europe. The standard European gauge, of course, is 1435, after all, and loosening ties to Russia and its 1520 gauge makes connecting to Europe via rail smoother, faster, more convenient, and cheaper. So here we are, <clears throat> the construction work starting soon, and as long as uh, the MFF negotiations do not provide any unforeseen surprises, it is expected to be finished in 2026. For that to happen, things have to accelerate and start moving faster. Rail Baltica cannot be built from Brussels. That is your job. It is the Balts who get the EU money, use it efficiently, and get the most out of it. Take responsibility, as I'm sure, as I'm sure you will, and you are already, and then you will make results, great results. You are on the right track as your ever-growing commitment to this project shows. I want to sincerely thank you all. It's been a great honor and a pleasant chance to share uh, this moment with like-minded people who appreciate the importance of transport for the European projects. I flew uh, here this morning from Helsinki and will continue uh, right after this to Brussels by plane. Now, wouldn't it be magnificent if during the next decade it would be possible to make this trip by train? Uh, it would certainly take much longer than a plane, but considering where we all came from in the European history, oh boy, wouldn't it be worth it? Thank you.